Sea Keeping. Hello, everybody. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. I had the opportunity to give a presentation to the Pakistan Naval Engineering College. No fancy math, just a simple overview of the science, structure, and process of sea keeping. I've then taken that video lecture and broken it up into several easy to digest YouTube videos. So let's dive into the subject of sea keeping. It's time to tie everything together into an example. Part six of our video series shows how we could apply the principles of motion control to a hypothetical situation. I'd like to just finish this off by providing a bit of an application example, something to really show you how motion control can work in reality and how a typical sea keeping project might go. So let's take a hypothetical situation of a human cannon. Let's pretend that um, you have a vessel that has to test a prototype for a new 650 millimeter gun. And this gun is very unique. It can launch humans to shore. They get into the barrel and they go flying out the front. Now, clearly this is a fictional scenario. I merely picked this idea because I knew it would be memorable. How do we mount this gun and test this prototype on a ship? Well, the input is that the cannon has to operate in sea state five or less with the ship traveling at a forward speed of zero knots. And our output is that the base of that gun has to remain level within plus or minus two degrees. And your task would be to develop a method of motion control to allow, motion, uh, allow gun operation. So that's a very good definition for sea keeping analysis. We have a specified input, we have a target output, and we now know what we're trying to work between. But even still, the, out the output from your sea keeping analysis is not going to be a definite yes or no answer. Remember how I said everything is based on statistics and probabilities? The output from your sea keeping analysis would say that you have a 5% chance of exceeding the limits of plus or minus two degrees. That's where a lot of the sea keeping analysis then turns into what, it's, what gets called an uptime analysis. It's rather than probability, we look at all the sea conditions in an area and say that for this ocean on the planet, you would be able to operate the gun for 360 days out of the year. Well, let's talk, think about what are some ways that we could control the motion for this gun. One option would be to isolate the gun from the ship motions. That's what we saw done with the walk to work vessels. Now remember that requires hydraulic compensation, it's expensive and it requires complicated motion control. And then we also have to think about the question of the interface between the gun and the ship. Now generally this is going to this gun is going to require some form of electricity or hydraulic power from the ship. Well, how do we get those wires to go between the ship and the gun, knowing that these two are now moving relative to each other? That's not an easy thing to work out. Okay, so let's say we don't like that option. Let's look at our next option is to instead reduce the ship motions. We'll keep the gun rigidly mounted to the ship and just make the entire ship move less. Okay, well, we're trying to reduce the amount of angle of inclination, which now means that if we have to keep the level or keep the gun level within plus or minus two degrees, we're now talking about keeping our ship's roll and pitch at less than two degrees. That's going to require a very strong spring response, which now means that we're completely redesigning the ship's hull. So we're at a scenario where we're building an entire ship just to support one piece of equipment. And we have to remember that creating that strong re spring response, that creates very fast ship motions high acceleration, which is not good for crew comfort. It's no good to create a piece of equipment on a ship if the crew can't actually stand up long enough to operate it. And that's possible. You can create ships that have so bad of a sea keeping that they're actually knocking the crew off their feet. So we don't like either of those options. How about a compromise then? Let's start with A, slowing down the ship motions, not completely eliminating them, just slowing them down. We're going to add some bilge keels, some ballast tanks, and possibly a deployable horizontal plate. 
All of that is going to add mass and add damping and slow down the speed of our ship motions. Then we're going to do passive isolation of the gun. What we'll do is we will mount the gun on a double axis gimbal, which will now isolate it in pitch and roll from the ship. So the gun is still linked physically to the deck of the ship, but it's free to pitch and roll separate from the ship. And then what we would do is add a passive gyro to the bottom to help the gun overcome any friction from that gimbal to make sure it's always staying level. Now, the result from that is everything I described here, these are all fairly cheap components. They're pretty easy to implement compared to some of the more expensive options. We don't need to have an active control system anymore. There's no computer involved. These are now just things where I flip on the power and it works. And the entire control is based on sizing these different components, not on any computer. And also we get a better gun interface. If we're thinking about how do we run wires between the ship and the gun, we now know a clear way we can run them along the arms of the gimbal. Now, is that the best option? Maybe, maybe not. That's where the seakeeping analysis would come in, and you'd have to look at different components and the relative magnitudes of your different solutions. That was just one example of how you could apply seakeeping analysis to motion control. And we talk about the output a lot, but you need to know all of the inputs and the interactions to gauge which method is the best. And even then, it may not always be the best solution. You know, I, I often tell people that seakeeping is a game of luck. Um, with all of the mathematics that we deal with, we have all of the probabilities and statistics, and all of these analyses still have as their output the possibility of just encountering random bad luck. That's the nature of ships and of the sea, is just having random bad luck. As I said at the beginning, there's always the risk of encountering a storm. Anytime we go to sea, we are risking the safety of the ships and frankly, the safety of our lives. Throughout history, we have looked and searched for tools to improve the odds, to reduce the risk to the ship. And I'm happy to say that seakeeping is one of those tools. It can't provide us absolute answers, but it can ensure that the odds of success and the odds of safety are stacked very heavily in our favor. I've got a secret for you. Anytime you see me showing something on video, I have services available that are way better than what you see for free. So check out the website to find out how I can make your next project easier.